our Sunday School lesson this week takes a look at the announcement that he, our Savior, Jesus Christ, he is risen. We'll see there in scripture today where Mary Magdalene and others, we find that they were going to the tomb before it was even the sunrise. And as they made their way to the tomb of Jesus, they found that he wasn't there. His body wasn't there. And this was something that was startling to the women that had went to the tomb early on the first day of the week. And they ran back. They ran to the disciples where they were hidden. We have to remember that the disciples, when Jesus was arrested, that they all scattered. They all ran away. We know in scripture that both Peter and John, they tried to follow Jesus as he was taken to trial and as he stood before the Sanhedrin council and as he went before Pilate as well. But Peter left and John was the only disciple that remained and, and tried to follow by. John was there at the crucifixion of Jesus along with the women as well. And they saw when Nicodemus and when Joseph of Arimathea, they saw when they took his body and when they placed his body in the tomb. That's why the women knew exactly where Jesus was placed. They knew where he was buried. And so when they went there on the first day of the week, that Sunday morning before it was sunrise and they found his tomb and they saw that it was empty, and again, it startled them. And they made their way to the disciples to let them know. Mary Magdalene said, I don't know where they have put him. I don't know where they have taken my savior. And there's a thought behind that. And I go deeper into the thought behind why Mary said that in the fuller commentary of my lesson that you can find at newfoundfaith.org. So if you want to read the fuller commentary or if you want to listen to the fuller commentary, you can do it there. But the thought behind all of this was that there was fear from both sides, those who followed Jesus and those who opposed Jesus, that Jesus's body would be taken away. We have to remember that Jesus had always said in the foretelling of his death that he would be risen up on the third day. And so the religious leaders, they were thinking on their side, hey, we don't want his followers to take his body and to be able to proclaim that he is risen. And then on Mary Magdalene's side, she figured that those who opposed Jesus, that they would take his body, that they would steal it and that they would move it elsewhere. But Jesus, we find in scripture that he truly was risen. The angels spoke to Mary Magdalene and the other women, letting them know that he wasn't there and to go and tell the other disciples that the savior was risen. But when Mary Magdalene and the other women, when they came to the disciples, Mary Magdalene was saying, hey, we don't know where they have taken Jesus. He isn't there. And so we find in our lesson today that two of the disciples, Peter, and the one whom Jesus loved, the beloved disciple, which we know is John, we find that there was a race to the tomb. And in this race to the tomb, the younger man won. Peter was the older man, and he reached the tomb after the younger John. And John, he stooped down. He didn't enter into the tomb. He stooped in and he looked at the tomb. And what he saw in the tomb was that Jesus' grave clothes, what he had been wrapped in, the linen that he was wrapped in, they were still there in the tomb just lying there. And the handkerchief that covered his face, it was still in the tomb, but it had been folded over. And so John, he just remained there. And then when Peter ran up to the tomb, and I imagine that Peter was out of breath when he got to the tomb, I imagine he looked at John and then he entered into the tomb, we're told. And when he entered into the tomb, he saw the same thing that John saw from the outside. The linen that Jesus was wrapped in, they were still lying there. But the handkerchief, we we're told in scripture, it was folded over. And so John and Peter, as they sat there in the tomb, scripture tells us that John believed. And the question will be, well, what did John believe? Well, John believed in the resurrection. He believed that Jesus really was risen. And the evidence that he saw in the tomb was, well, Jesus' clothes, what he had been wrapped in, they were just lying there. And what we find in scripture is that when Jesus called Nicodemus from the grave, when, when Nicodemus was risen from the dead, when he was resurrected, if you will, Jesus had to command that the linen that he had been wrapped in, he had to command that it be taken off of him. 
So in order for the linen to still have been there in the tomb, someone would have had to either unwrap Jesus or something supernatural happen. And let us go with the supernatural because we've seen this in the transfiguration of Jesus in the Bible study that I did, that when Jesus was risen from the grave, he was in his glorified body. And we find that that body was able to do some things that the natural body simply isn't able to do. So in my imagination, I imagine that when Jesus was risen from the grave, there was nobody there to unwrap him. There was nobody there to unwrap that linen that he was wrapped in. And so I imagine that he phased out of the linen and that the linen was just laying there. And then he took the handkerchief that was over his face and he folded it up. There was no evidence of anything malicious happening there. There was no signs that Jesus had been dragged from the tomb. Uh, the linen we are told was torn into two as it would have been had someone had to unwrap him. And again, with the handkerchief being folded over again, there was no sign of maliciousness. And so John, with the evidence that he had on scene, he didn't see a crime being committed. He didn't see where anyone had taken or had stolen the body of Jesus. So John, he believed. What's fascinating about this scripture is that we aren't necessarily told what Peter thought. Peter, again, he entered into the tomb and he saw the same thing as John. And I imagine that in Peter's mind, he was simply lost in thought. I would have to imagine that Peter didn't see anything that would say that there was malicious activity that had took place, but we have to remember the frame of mind that Peter was in. Again, thinking back to the night when Jesus was arrested, Peter had cut off the ear of the servant of the high priest. Then after that, he tried to follow Jesus when he was being held on trial, but he couldn't follow. And the reason why he couldn't follow is because when someone said, hey, aren't you one of those that followed Jesus? Peter ended up denying Jesus. Not one time, but he denied him three times is what scripture tells us. And so if we put ourselves in the frame of mind of Peter, I would say that Peter maybe was lost in that moment not knowing what to truly believe. And John tells us as much that at that point in time, they couldn't remember the scripture. They couldn't remember what Jesus had foretold about his death and the fact that he would be risen on the third day. And so Peter, I believe, may have been lost in that moment in time. But we find after this, and we'll see this in our Sunday School lesson next week, that, G that Jesus visited Peter privately. And all that Peter may have been questioning or wondering in that moment it went away. But again, Jesus was risen. He was risen on the third day. And we find that he was risen before the sun had even rose and that it was Mary Magdalene and the others who had saw this, the tomb being empty, they saw it firsthand for themselves. And they are the ones that went and they told the disciples, hey, Jesus isn't there. They have told, they have taken Jesus is what they had said. And we see where two of the disciples, they ran out to the tomb and they saw that the tomb was empty. Today, we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is confirmation of all that God had made a promise to of us in the garden. He promised that there would be a defeat of sin, that there would be a defeat of Satan. And Jesus did that on the cross. But the resurrection is confirmation of that victory. Not only is it confirmation of that victory, it is, confirm it is confirmation that the Lord loves us. It is confirmation that, again, Jesus truly was the only begotten Son of God. So what did we learn today? We learned again that, of course, he is risen. And through his resurrection, we have learned again that God loves us, that God fulfills and keeps his promises, the promises that he has made to us, that everlasting covenant that he has made to us, God has kept it. Today, we are of faith. We believe that he is risen and we rejoice today because the fact that he is risen means that we have been saved through our faith. We will not perish. We will have everlasting life. All right. 
So that is our lesson for this week. I hope that you'll come back for our Sunday School lesson next week where we take a look at proof that he is indeed risen. All right, so come back next week to our lesson and I hope that during that time that you will continue to keep all of those around you lifted up in prayer. You never know what anybody is going through, so let us all be prayerful. And again, let us continue about in grace and in love. That is our calling as a child of God to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. So until next time, again, I continue to do the same for all of you. I'll continue to keep all of you lifted up in my prayers, and I pray that the Lord continues to keep and to bless all of you.